Hi guys, welcome back. Thank you for watching. Please do hit subscribe if you haven't done so yet. That would be fantastic. Welcome to part three of Ditch the Fix. And today is a big one because we're going to be tracking drums, which of course is the basis of the entire song. Now I'm going to be working remotely with an awesome drummer called Emily Dolan Davies. We have worked together before. We did the Christmas song together a few years ago, which you can check out up there now if you want to, even though it's March. And uh, yeah, she's absolutely awesome to work with. She's super professional, an amazing drummer, has incredible feel, and she's also a lot of fun to get on with, which is one of the most important things in this industry. So the way things I think are going to work today is, in the last few days, I've been getting everything ready for Emily. As I said in the last video, I want to record this entire song to an old 1800s metronome. So I recorded four minutes of the metronome. I recorded my guide guitars to that, sent Emily an MP3 so she could hear what the song was all about, and essentially gave her a brief in a kind of clinical way of what I wanted the drums to be on the song, which were pretty much just two things. Firstly, I wanted as much performance and character and kind of spontaneous reaction as I could get. And also it has to be one take because we're not editing anything, which she's totally cool with because that's just how she rolls. Anyway, so she knows exactly what I'm after today and she's going to live stream the whole recording session, which is great so I can see it in real time. And she's also going to film her recording the drums partly so I can edit together the official video at the end, but also so that you can see what's going on. And in a few minutes time, you'll start seeing her footage and not mine. So I think that's how it's gonna work when I edit this video together. So she's going to record the drum tracks and send me an MP3. So I can hear in pretty decent audio quality what's going on. And I will almost certainly say, yeah, that's fantastic. Let's go with that. If there's anything I want changing, I say, can we change this? She'll go back, do it again. And then when we are both totally happy with how the drums sound, we will settle up the bill. And after that, she'll send me the full quality audio stems over for me to carry on recording to. Now, that's a really cool thing that we are able to do nowadays with the internet. It's, you know, it's not being in the studio with the person, but it's so much more convenient. And because you don't have to hire out a studio with everyone's home studio setups, it's much cheaper. And you do get to work with fantastic people like Emily. And uh, yeah, it's an absolute dream working with her. One word of caution I would say about session players in general, and I have come across this a few times in the past, especially being an independent solo musician. I'm not a big name or a record label or anything. Sometimes session players market themselves on the internet and invite work and you approach them. And a couple of times I've kind of had the response from people of, well, I'm really busy with really important things at the moment, but pay me in advance and I'll fit your work in around my much more important stuff. You won't get any revisions and you pretty much get what you're given. Which as a creative person trying to work on their own piece of music, doesn't really sit well with me because the whole creative process should be fun. And when it becomes, for the want of a better expression, like a clinical business transaction. Yes, everyone has to be paid, of course, that's how it works. But when that's the most important part of the process for the session player, rather than the creativity, it's not overly fun working like that. And I guess kind of working remotely without being in the room with the person kind of invites that. But at the same time, they're pitching for work and you're trying to give them work. So to get the reaction of that isn't particularly nice. But as I said, Almost all session players I've ever worked with have not been like that, and they are fantastic creative people who do a wonderful job. And Emily is most certainly one of those. So find the right session player, and working remotely can be absolutely fantastic. So without further ado, with a bit of video editing, you should now start seeing Emily's footage of tracking the drums for the new song. Um, right, I'm just going to write a chart. Okay, right, let's go. Ooh. I'm always a fan of a shuffle. Shuffle? Shuffle? What's a shuffle? Shuffle. You said about that. Um, that snare drum being by itself, so we'll definitely go for that. I like it. Times two plus fill one, two, three, four. Okay. I like that. I like 
it's a kick. But it's very drummery, just so you know. Two, three, and four. And so it's literally that. There's a lot of sections in this, isn't there? I'm running out of page. Cool. Um, I'm going to try and hit that guitar. <laughs> Wish me luck. Let's do a little live stream. Are we on? Yes, we're on. Hello! How are you? So he sent me over what is essentially a guide track. Well, a series of guide tracks. He sent me some stems. Um, the other thing is he wants me to record it. So I have, <laughs> I have a GoPro here. Say hello to Joe through the power of the internet. Um, I'm sure this is a bit odd because, you know, seeing yourself like that. But anyway, um, so yes, he'd also like me to do this in one take. It is a sort of bluesy rock tune shuffle. Um, I'm definitely going to have some fun with it. There's a bunch of accents. I can guarantee you I will probably be doing four or five takes of this because there's lots of bits um, and he wants some big fills. Okay, so like I say, this is going to be a one take situation because I'm videoing it aside from anything. Uh, I have a nice chart, which you can see there. Like you say, like I said, rather, lots of bits in it. Um, really great guide track. He sort of said it is a guide, so do what comes naturally. But there are a couple of bits that he 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 wants. Totally cool. Um, and I will sort of keep. There's a lot of accents, like I say, so I want to keep a lot of this stuff in mind for people. Um, I feel like that last one was it. Um, I got all the stabs, I got all the fills, um, yeah. And the thing is that uh, Joe wanted something that was quite human as well, so it didn't have to be perfect. It was more about vibe, because it's sort of showing that 70s kind of thing. Um, hence why I was using sort of a lower sounding snare, etc. Joe, why aren't you showing your face? No, this isn't you. <laughs> this is not you. There he is. Okay, that's definitely Joe. And hi, Ems. Great shuffle. Thank you so much. I was brought up doing shuffles. That's kind of my favourite thing in the world. So, symbols wise, I've got a mixture. They're all Zildjian. They're a mixture of, so on my, my hats are 15 inch. What are they? What are they? 15 inch. 15 inch new beads for the hats. And then I've got a... Constantinople ride which is beautiful um, and then I have an 18 inch A custom on my left and an 18 inch K custom on my right anyway I feel like I have that final take what I'm gonna do is is I'm gonna send it over to Joe but anyway hope you guys have a lovely day and I shall speak to y'all soon all right see you later bye How long did it take me to get this accent here? <laughs> Pretty happy with that. I really hope you are too. <laughs> Alright, I'm sending to literally now, so I'm switching off. Alright, see you later! Bye.